Welcome back and thank you very much for staying with us. Now let's begin with some developments in the polity. The meeting between President Bola Tinubu and organized labor has ended with an agreement to benchmark the new national minimum wage at 70,000 naira. This resolution was reached at the end of the rescheduled meeting between leadership of the Nigeria Labor Congress and Trade Union Congress with President Bola Tinubu and some members of his cabinet in the presidential villa. Labour accepted the federal government's offer of 70,000 naira and the proposal to renegotiate minimum wage every three years as against every five years as it is currently being practiced. President Zinubu also promised more incentives, especially the provision of CNG buses, passive investments in infrastructure and more economic opportunities for Nigerians. Presidents also approved the payment of outstanding arrears and entitlements of the academic staff union of universities and the Senior Staff Association of Nigeria. The new national minimum wage will now be submitted as a bill to the National Assembly for legislation before it is sent back to the President for assets and it becomes law. We are happy to announce today that both the federal government and the organized labor have agreed on this, an increase on the 62,000 Naira minimum wage. The new national minimum wage that we expect Mr. President to submit to the National Assembly for legislation is 70,000 Naira. But that is not all. There is also a boost that like Mr. President has assured in ensuring that massive investment is going to be made in the area of infrastructure. There is also a deepening of the investment of the federal government in renewable energy. We are in an era where things are moving very fast in terms of uh, both uh, macro and microeconomic policies. Uh, but um, with also the caveat that this is going to be done every three years, I mean three years, the next review will be three years. And uh, after that pronouncement, we from Labour, just as they said as well, we have received uh, what the President has, uh, has promised uh, from both ends. But in suspected killers of a traditional ruler in a Kiti local government area of Kwara State, Obare Mulushagun, have been arranged at the state high court for the offenses of kidnapping and culpable homicide. The suspects were accused of causing the death of Obare Mulushagun and kidnapping his wife, Olori Yabu Aremu. They were also accused of demanding for the sum of 100 million as ransom for the release of the kidnapped victims. A 12 million naira was later paid. The Director of Public Prosecution, Mohamed Akwande, informed the court that the offenses against the suspects are capital in nature, which requires them to have legal representation, but some of them did not have any. The trial judge, Justice Umaru Zikir, granted bail to two of the suspects, while others were further remanded in the correctional facility, and the case was adjourned to 30th of this month for proper arraignment. The defendant, they were held in court, but some of the defendants were not represented by counsel, and this is a criminal matter which requires each of the defendants to be represented. In view of this, the court adjourned the matter to the 30th of this month for the proper arraignment. By then, the lawyers who are absent today will be communicated and they will be in court. Then the case can proceed then. Governor Adbukefas and APC youth groups in Taraba State are commending President Bola Tinubu for appointing an indigene of the state, Abubakar Dansafo, as the new managing director of the Nigerian Port Authority. Senior reporter Wola Biadenusi found in this report. The recent appointment of Abubakar Dansafo as the managing director of the Nigerian Port Authority has been greeted with appreciation by the leadership of the People's Democratic Party and All Progressives Congress in Taraba State. The State Governor Abu Kefas commends the President for the appointment, while the youth wing of the APC pledged support for the Tinubu's administration. Uh, before I continue, I want to first of all use this opportunity to thank the President and Commander-in-Chief of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, His Excellency President Asiwaji Ahmed Bola Tinibu, 
for finding one of us, an illustrious son of Taraba, worthy enough to be appointed as the director, managing director, Nigerian Port Authority, in person of Dr. Abu Bakr Garba Lantoho. This follow numerous lucrative appointments from this government. We truly appreciate Mr. President, and we shall continue to give our unwavering support to this government as young people from Taraba State. The youth wing of the APC, however, expressed concern over the internal wrangling in the state. He urges all stakeholders to set aside their differences and solidify the party before the next elections in 2027. We, we made it a point of duty to visit Mr. President and other prominent leaders of the party because in several occasions, Mr. President himself has raised concern on the rift the crisis among Taraba State stakeholders. He met with them in Lagos House in Abuja. When he visited Taraba on the 7th of May for consultation, he repeated that. And if you look at the attitude of most of the stakeholders and APC, it's as if they are out, they are targeting almost each other. It's as if they have issues with, them, with themselves when they were in the other political parties. The DF will transfer those issues back to APC when they were coming into APC. Since the last general elections where the APC lost, the party has allegedly been in disarray. The APC youth group is now demanding unity, collaboration and mutual respect among the party leaders. Let's take a short break and while we return, it will be time to discuss the preparations of PDP for the upcoming Edo governorship election. And my guest tonight is Barrister Dan. Big spokesperson, PDP Governorship Campaign Council. I'll be right back. Welcome back, everyone. Ahead of the September 21st governorship election in a door state, the nomination of Dr. Aswe Godalo as the People's Democratic Party candidate for the 2024 Edo State governorship election has been affirmed by a federal high court sitting in Abuja. The judgment delivered by Justice James Omotosha dismisses former Deputy Governor Philip Shiba's challenge. There was Godalo's nomination confirming that he was duly selected during the PDP primary election held on February 22, 2024. The court found the plaintiff's claims lacked merit and insufficient evidence to substantiate allegations of voters card forgery. In another development, Justice James Amoto Shaw also voided the impeachment of Philip Shibu as the deputy governor of Edo State. Justice Amoto Shaw, while delivering that judgment, ordered that Shibu be reinstated to his office because the Edo State House of Assembly failed to comply with due process in impeaching him. And just as that ruling implies, the reinstated deputy governor of Philip Shibu resumed office today with his full security detail as he also addresses the people of a door state. Let's listen to the deputy governor, Philip Shibu. Tyranny and oppression has no place in our modern democracy. We must resist those who seek to undermine our freedom and trample on our rights. To all those trying to frustrate our striving democracy with illicit actions, with the aim of throwing our dear Edo state into confusion. Always remember, posterity will judge you for your betrayal and blunter abuse of office. The voice of the common man remains in the hands of the judiciary. And they have once again affirmed that the judiciary remains the last hope of the common man. Right, so all of this have happened in the last uh, 24 hours. But what does this mean for the People's Democratic Party ahead of the governorship election in September, especially as Deputy Governor Philip Shaibu had publicly declared support for the All Progressives Congress? Tonight, let's speak with Barrister Dan Ugbege, spokesperson in PDP Governorship Campaign Council. Good evening to you, Barrister. Thank you so much for joining us on Politics Tonight. Thank you. Yes, good evening. Yes, good evening. Thanks for having me tonight. 
Right, so first let's start with uh, these two judgments and what it means for your party. On one side, Justice Omotosha says Philip Shaibu remains the deputy governor of Edo State. And before now, what we know is that the PDP had suspended him for anti-party activities. But in another judgment, uh, Justice Omotosha had affirmed Daswe Godalo's candidacy. So what does this mean for the PDP? Well, let's start with the first judgment that came yesterday. It was to the effect that uh, the case filed by Philip Shaibu was dismissed or struck out by, uh, by the Federal High Court. Uh, first of all, that uh, it was statute bar and filed out of time. And secondly, that the plaintiff could not prove uh, the case of forgery against uh, the candidate of the PDP, Dr. Aswe Godalo. So that, for me, was uh, a judgment on law. And uh, we expected that to happen, actually. And it's actually victory for Edo people who have been very worried that uh, the APC and their courts are doing everything possible to ensure that uh, Dr. Aswe Rodalo will not be on the ballot come September 21st. Then, let's look at the second judgment. The second judgment where that went against what you say is the PDP now, because the court heard that uh, the House of Assembly did not follow or could not prove uh, gross misconduct against the uh, former deputy governor of a Doe State. But my contention is that it's a bit worrisome, because the House of Assembly, if you look at what they did, followed all the processes, you know, uh, enumerated by Section 188 from Subsection 1 to Subsection 9 of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Then Section 10 talked about gross misconduct. And what constitutes gross misconduct? What they found was that the former Deputy Governor Philip Shaibu uh, actually revealed official state secrets. And that, for me, qualifies as gross misconduct because Section 97 of the Criminal Code, you know, uh, uh, specifies or provides that a person that, you know, uh, shares, publicly share, or cause to be shared, official secret of state, is, uh, is guilty of an offense. And that offense is punishable by two years imprisonment. For me, that is a misdemeanor that qualifies as gross misconduct. So I think the House of Assembly actually followed the process mm. and they were able to show that the former deputy governor, uh, you know, that uh, that allegation of, uh, that All gross right. misconduct allegation of uh, revealing official state secrets, mm. so that know, he actually did. You know, the evidence was clear. You know, yes. it's, it's a different case for you to say to a fellow human being that we followed the due process. But uh, it's in this case, the court is saying they were not able to prove that uh, the deputy governor actually uh, misbehaved. But as a lawyer, that is what I'm saying. Yes. Uh, that's what I'm also saying. That I mean, they were. It was okay. very hard for them to prove that case in court. But as a lawyer, would you agree that that case instituted against Philip Shaibu is an abuse of court process? And as the deputy governor says, it was illegal and a direct assault on our democratic values as a country. No, no. what was it the case or the impeachment? The was impeachment, it the impeachment? Was it the impeachment I'm talking about now? The impeachment. No, if they followed due process, I just told you, they did all the constitution, you know, specify that they, that they should do when impeaching a, a governor or a deputy governor from subsection one. To situation nine, the institutional thing that talks about gross misconduct. What is gross misconduct? Because that is actually the meat of the judgment of yesterday. Mm. And I just said that revealing or causing to be published official state secret was gross misconduct. All right. So with the PDP, do you think the PDP or the House of Assembly would be appealing this judgment? No, it has already been appealed. It was appealed. The notice of appeal has been filed, and the still execution has been filed, and they'll be served on the Inspector General of Police. 
So that was why we found it curious today. When Philishaibu stormed Benin City with talks waiting for him at the airport, and they caused mayhem on innocent Edo people today at the airport room. We'll, we'll come back to that matter. We'll That's come back to that course. matter because uh, yeah. the APC has also condemned this. And a lot of Edo people are saying the deputy governor was only respecting or adhering to court order by going to his but office. So, to even if there's a judgment, even if the PDP has not even appealed the judgment, he cannot resort to self help because that judgment is a document of the court and only court officials can, you know, start a process of execution by, first of all, mm. sending that document, the CTC of the judgment, to the Inspector General of Police or to the police authorities who will thereafter, you know, execute that judgment. All but, right. you know, because the Federal High Court was a court of first instance, there was no way you could just rush to execute that immediately because you know that the other party is going to, you know, appeal the judgment, which they have actually rightly done. Mm. So, yes. your so opinion is debatable, Barrister. Your opinion is yes, debatable. Uh, but again, the PDP at the moment is a fragmented party, as many have put it. So, if a former deputy no, I governor... So. I don't agree with you. Okay, Excuse kindly me. hold on. Kindly PDP hold on. So, if a party. former deputy governor who has now been reinstated who many see as a politician deeply in tune with the grassroots, is going all out to work against this party. I mean, coupled with the gale of defections in the last few months, someone like Charles Idoahosa left with all of his supporters to the APC. Do you really think a house divided against itself will stand? Okay, you just asked a question. I hope you allow me to answer the question. Of course. First of all, first of all the former deputy governor, Philip Shaibu, is not a grassroots politician. A man who has consistently lost his unit and his board cannot be described as a grassroots politician. In fact, it took him in 2016, according to an INEC official who came out on national television, it took him pointing a gun at an INEC official to get his unit canceled in 2016. In 2020, in his own election, when he was contested as deputy governor, he lost his unit. He lost his work. In the last election, in 2003, he lost his unit. He lost his work. As we speak, in his constituency, APC represents his immediate constituency. And he was in PDP. Now, he's no more in the PDP. He's not in the APC. So you cannot say PDP is the house divided against itself. The renegades in PDP have all moved to join their kindred spirits in the APC. And you mentioned Chassis Dawes are just now. Go and check the records if he wins his unit and his war. Go and check. In the last election, he lost his unit and his war woefully. So you see, when you see people who should not even be in the political arena, they have people give them a name they don't deserve. We just shake our heads aloud. And they don't say we all know ourselves. Until maybe three months ago, me personally, I was in the APC. And it was because of what I saw that made me leave the APC because I saw that Aswe Rodalo was a by far better candidate than the candidate of the APC. A man who did not know the difference between a zoo and a museum. So when I saw that the candidate of the APC was not somebody that had the capacity or the character or the personality to be a dog governor right now, mm. then I had to uh, resign from the party so that I'll be able to work for uh, the governorship ambition of Dr. Asho Rodalo of the PDP. But also, and there, are uh, many, mm. there are many APC people who are doing the same thing. Many. Barrister, many are, are you worried about any act of anti party yes. activities? Are you worried about any act of anti party activities that may? Happened as a result of this of the fallout of the governorship primaries by those loyal to uh, Philip Shaibu. If these issues are not addressed, and it's not the only one, also no, the defectors. I said it before. I said they moved to join their kindred spirit in the in the APC. I'm not worried about any uh, anti-party activity. 
The people in the PDP are those who mean well for a Tuesday right now, and those who support Dr. Aswe Ingudalu. So those who claim to be part of the legacy PDP or leaders of the legacy PDP, they've, they've joined their interest group in the APC. And that was why many of them have also been either suspended or expelled by the PDP. Mm. So there will be no room for any form of antipathy activity. Okay, I hear you. But from what has happened today, uh, Edo State now has two deputy governors. What is the implication? What is the implication that of that on? What is the implication of that on governance in Edo State? That is what I'm saying. It is not true. Edo State has one deputy governor. And his name is Omobayo. You know, you, you have to be very honest with yourself, me. Barrister, because at the moment... No, but let me tell you, listen, please. I've made this point before. I said, when you have a court of first instance, deliver a judgment. It is not the final court. There's the court of appeal, there's the Supreme Court. And the PDP has filed a, a, a notice of appeal and still of mm. execution, and they served that still of execution on this Bureau General Police. So they are going to wait. They are going to have the patience to wait. The, the court of appeal decides one way or the other. And after the court of appeal, you also have the Supreme Court mm. who will decide one way or the other. So you cannot refer to Philip Shaibu as the Supreme Court for his mouth. Basically, now, sir, sir, you're was, talking I was about... In a sister, mm. I was in a sister station just a moment ago. And the lawyer to Philip Shaibu claimed that that after Oshomo won in 2008, he immediately went to Governor House. And I reminded him that was not true, that it was a court of first instance. After Oshomo won at the tribunal, he waited for PDP at that time to appeal. Okay. So that the court of appeal, which was at that time the final court that gave judgment for Oshomo that he was sworn in the next day. That was the final court. So, Felix Ibo should wait for the Court of Appeal. After the Court of Appeal, then the Supreme Court. If, mm. they, give, if, they, if they give him judgment, they can now assume that All right. position as the. All right, so I'm saying to you that what we have at the moment, I hear you that that's the court of first instance, and you're saying yes. Felix Ibo should have waited, but he has not waited because this is what the uh, Justice Omotosha said. He set aside the appointment of the new deputy governor who replaced Shaibu. The court held that the allegation on which the House of Assembly based impeachment proceedings was untenable in law and did not constitute gross misconduct. He ordered the Inspector General of Police to provide him with needed security to enable him to resume office and perform the functions of the office until the end of his tenure. So you're saying the Deputy Governor should have waited. But I'm, I'm I mean, the, my question is based on, can you hold on? My question is based on what we saw today. We saw him go into his office. So I am saying that now, at the moment, before your next uh, prediction or your next move, there are two deputy governors in Edo State. So what is the implication of this on governors in Edo State? I've answered you. I said there's only one deputy governor in Edo State, and his name is Godwin Omobayo. All right. Philip Shaibu was deputy governor. He has been impeached, and he stands impeached. Now, the chairman of the court yesterday, he cannot just eat the fruit of it immediately because the PDP has filed a notice of appeal and a stay of execution. And they also served the notice of appeal and stay of execution on the executing agency, which is the Nigerian police. Now, Philip Shaibu cannot on his own, you know, resort to self help to execute a judgment of the court. A judgment of the court can only be executed by officers of the court in collusion with the Nigerian police. Philip Shaibu did clearly show that he's lawless, he's unruly, and he does not care about law and order by trying to resort to self-help. In fact, he even used, I saw a video a moment ago where he put the seat of the deputy governor of Edo State on his vehicle. And that was wrong. That was illegal. Philip Shaibu has a history of violence mm. and he believes that everything is going to take, he will take it by force. You can do a research on him if you do not know. In 2016, he was accused by an annex staff of pointing the gun at him to get results in his unit. 
In 2020, even the revered of Bawini had to warn him publicly, openly, to take it easy. So we know him. Right from, we were in the we were in university at the same time. I was in the university when he was last president. We know his history. It is replete with violence all the way. And what the APC is doing, I need to quickly say this, what the APC is doing is to precipitate an atmosphere of percentity of unruliness, an atmosphere of violence and insecurity on a dosage so that to call the attention of the president who belongs to their party, so that the president mm. will declare a state of emergency on a dosage, or so that the president will show more than a passive interest in a dosage and help them take a dosage by force. They brought an unpopular candidate in the person of Mondo Bevolo, who has not been able to speak to a dosage, who has not been able to tell a do people his agenda, who has not been able to say what he will do for a do people. So they believe that the only way they can stop the PDP and the kind of, of the PDP, Dr. Asue Rodalo, is to ensure that the PDP is not on the ballot or that they use federal might against the PDP. But I have the information for them All right. that no president can declare a state of emergency on any state. Every state in Nigeria must be governed by democratically elected governments. No, All right, Barista, let me put you on no, hold. Let me put you on hold for a minute. Uh, it's important for me to announce that we're connecting to another program now, but this program continues on our other platform and on Ofcom. All right, Barista, so let's, let's move on with this conversation. Let's talk about the man, Aswe Igodalo. Who is Aswe Igodalo? He's a lawyer, a legal practitioner of higher repute. He's a businessman of higher repute. He's a giant, the captain of industry, the giant in the general business world, is a transactional lawyer, and he is the founding partner of Banwo and Odano, a firm of legal parishioners that happens to be the biggest law firm in Nigeria in terms of volume of work, volume of transaction, the biggest law firm in Nigeria in terms of number of lawyers, over 125 lawyers, to make it by far the biggest law firm in Nigeria and probably the 10th biggest in Africa. He's a policy formulator and is somebody that has been around. He was an advisor to Adam Sushomole for about maybe seven or six years. And for the last seven years and some months, he's been an advisor to God in Obaseki. And after about 14 years or 13 years of being an advisor to government of Edo State, he has now said he wants to be the executive governor of Edo State. So that he'll be able to put to bear, he'll be able to implement all he has learned over the years as somebody who has played on the sideline of the government of Edo State. He wants to be the man in charge now. And he has a document, his manifesto, which is called the pathway to prosperity. If I have the time, I can begin to look at them, the promises. He document what he has documented to do for a do mm. as governor of All right, and we'll, we'll get to that uh, perhaps when okay. real politicking starts. You know, looking at yes. this from all he has achieved and from everything you just reeled out, uh, he looks like an excellent technocrat. So if he has been yeah, part of the Obaseki administration by offering advisory roles to that government, shouldn't he also take, uh, you know, take the blame or share a part of it for some of the shortcomings your people talk about? ranging from no good roads, especially from rural to urban areas, food unavailability, no light, and despite the government claiming to have spent $150 million on flood control, erosion management is still a challenge. Well, I will not agree with you on that. First of all, what they say about the government of Obaseki are concussions by opposition elements. They are real anger against Obaseki is his failure to empower them, according to them. His failure or his inability to open the votes so they can share money to political godfathers. And that was the reason why they refused to give him the ticket in uh, 2020. And of course, he went to the PDP who gave him the ticket. And those people thought 
and was going to open the vault. And of course, he failed to open the vault. He refused to open the vault. But instead, he channeled Edo funds to serve the ordinary Edo people. I will tell you something. There is no government in the history of Edo State from 1991 to date that has done as much in our roots as the government of Godinoba City. There is no government that has done simple service reforms in the history of Edo State as much as Godinoba City. You come to Edo State Public Service today, it is operated as though it is private sector. It is, you, you, you see the staff are motivated, they are trained and retrained regularly, and they attend to you more professionally. So the upper second has done so well, and the people who complain against him are not the ordinary people in the street. They are not the regular guys. They are mostly politicians and political leaders who believe that their foreign to politics must be to acquire wealth, must be to grab public resources. But upper second is not like that. It doesn't operate like that. You must have something to offer before he can engage you. You must have a track record of excellence before he can engage you. So those who, in court, I will call loafers, those who are lazy, who do not have anything to offer, who just believe that what happened under, under Adam Shomole, while Adam Shomole was doing up money to politicians, we continue under Obaseki. Obaseki said no. He instead focused on Building the people, working for the people, doing All right. inner roads. Let me flip and that question, about, Barrister. Yes. Let me flip that question. The and even the roads you're talking about that are bad in the state, they are mostly federal roads. Mm. They are mostly federal roads. So let me flip that question. The Obasaki administration yes. recorded uh, a significant increase in the state's IGR. So what else is that so good, Igodalo coming to do? What is the missing link? What are the problems he intends to address? What has Obaseki not done that he's coming to fix? Thank you. He has said that he will continue from where the previous government stopped. Not just God, you know, Baseki, but even Adam Sushumole, even Lockheed Binetino and Chief Odigi of Yeko. And of course, I can mention Professor Osumbo, who was there for about 18 months. So that means the flood control that Obaseki started, and I mean that, that Shumole started, and Obaseki is working on, is going to continue with it. And it's going to bring new vigor to government. It's going to focus on Edo people. It's going to focus on human capacity development. It's going to focus on providing food on the table for Edo people. So that means there will be more investment in agriculture. There will be more investment in raising new sportsmen, developing the uh, sports potentials of Edo people. There will be more investment in the area of innovation, in building young professionals who are innovative. And of course, as an investment banker himself, he's also going to focus on bringing uh, invest investors from outside the country who will invest in Edo State. Edo State has a lot of investment potential in rubber, in uh, pan produce, in timber, in a lot of things, in human capital. Without messing words, I can tell you that there is no state in a do state that is even as developed as a do in terms of human capacity. It will interest you to know that an, an Edo family has been rated consistently for many years now as the most intelligent family in the UK. And we have a lot of them here. So Both how would you how would you say Barrister, how would you say the people of Edo State have received the idea of his candidacy? And I'm asking that question because you know Edo State is homogeneous in language, culture and tradition. And your people yes. uh, Edo people are saying Asu Egodalo is a Lagos boy, is an outsider who does not understand what exactly Edo needs? I mean, yes, leadership looks like it's 40, but when it comes to grassroots politicking, how has it been able to connect with Edo people? You know, the politicians, the people who are saying he's a stranger, he's a Lagos boy, they are politicians 
who has scared Steve of his popularity in a few states. Mm. Now, if somebody who they say is a stranger, is a Lagos boy, is having the kind of support that Aswe Wodalo is having at the moment, that is making the APC to be scared, then that means that the people do not really care whether you grew up here or not. Now, I was watching one of the APC leaders who was saying that Aswe Wodalo was a stranger and the people will not, should not food for a stranger. None of his children live in a state. They either live in Europe or America or Nabucha. I was watching. So does it mean if his children come of age and they want to contest for election, we will say, no, you don't live here in a state. You live abroad or you live in Abuja or you live in Lagos. We will not vote for you. We will not allow you. And those people will not look at where a candidate grew up in. And therefore, we look at a candidate with the right personality, with the right character, and with competence. That's what we look at. And just say we look at a candidate with a plan. And Aswe Udalo has shown that he is the only candidate with a plan. He's the only one that has come up with a manifesto, which is called Pathway to Prosperity for All. Not just for some, but for all. So the others have not come up with any manifesto. They don't come with any agenda, no nothing. And as Godalo says, he wants to be bound by this document. And the people should look at the document. And he has said that the first three months of his government is going to uh, pay to 50,000 Edo indigents, 50,000 Naira, for the first three months. That is to help them to be able to augment their living. To, 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 to make them balance. Then from there, if we also give business grants to 1,000 Edo innovators and businessmen. So it's really for, and Edo people are receiving his message because he's the only one talking to them mm. about what he will. The APC candidate is not talking at all. The Labour Party candidate is only threatening. He's not talking about what he will do. He does not have a plan does not have an agenda where do it. Is your if candidate I, talking, uh, Barrister? Yes. I said, is your candidate talking? Because of course, he's mm -hmm. talking to Edo people. He has moved around in look at crannies of Edo state, sharing messages mm -hmm. in manifest. So the why why the choice of uh, why the choice of uh, Osaro Diodo Gear? I hope I could uh, pronounce that correctly. That Osaro Dion Osaro Dion Gear. Mm. Osaudio means God is the greatest, God is the senior, is the head. Okay. Then Oge means king. And the choice of Osaudio Oge, who is a senior lawyer like Dr. Asue Egodalo, was a master stroke. Osaudio Oge, I would say, is probably the most grass rooted politician in Edo State of Aid. He, he has his network spread across the state, especially in the Edo South. He is also an experienced politician and statesman. He has brought a lot to that ticket. And it is one of the reasons why the opposition elements are very scared of this election and they don't want the PDP to be on the ballot. All right. So, you know, there are insinuations that... Um Dr. Igodalo's emergence is Governor Basaki's third term project. I mean, I don't know what that means, and that's why you're here to clarify that. But also, looking at it from another angle, isn't it hypocritical that Governor Basaki, who had always been against the idea of godfatherism in politics, who had always said, uh, deal with me if I become a godfather, now has a godson? No, actually, Igodalo is no godson mm. of anybody. He's not godson of the governor of Edosti. Is his own man. You live in Lagos. I'm sure you know Aswe Wudalu and you know his pedigree. A man of that status and level who has succeeded in his choosing career as a transactional lawyer. A man who has succeeded in business. Don't forget he was also chairman of the Nigeria Economy Summit Group. He was chairman of Nigeria Breweries. He was chairman of Dangote Flower. He was chairman of Selling Bank. 
So a man with that pedigree, I can even be a government department. But the young pastor key should be praised for supporting Aswe Udalo to emerge as a candidate of the PDP. And I will tell you two reasons why. For that, for the governor to accept the candidacy of Aswe Udalo without being scared of the profile of Aswe Udalo. He knows, of course, he will not be able to control him. And that shows what the opposite king means well for those things. Now, the second reason why I do people to praise or thank for the Nobel Second is because in 2020, he promised the people of Issa, Edo Central, Senatorial District, who have never produced a governor in this dispensation, in this fourth republic, he promised them that if they vote for him, he will support one of them to mm. become the governor of Edo State after him. And of course, that's what he did to support Aswe Godalo because the Edo Central people, the five local governments, voted a mass for uh, Godino Basaki. And he kept to his promise by supporting Aswe Godalo. So instead of calling his godfather, because he does not follow him around, he does not follow Aswe Godalo around, he does not show that he's a do or that affair. He's facing his work as governor of Edo State, allowing Aswe Godalo to ingratiate himself to Edo people to meet Edo people and convince them why they should vote for him. Mm. So we should press him. And he has said that after his governorship, he will, take, he will leave government entirely. Mm. And the person he has supported now, who has been successful in everything he has ever been in charge of, is Dr. Aswe mm. you know Now, what? it is actually... It is actually the APC that is coming up with a candidate who appears to somebody that is pliable, somebody they can control and push around. And the man, uh, Mondeo Pemolo, said in a statement in a viral video a few weeks ago that he is going to serve Godfathers. Mm. That, if he, that if he did not, uh, as God, if he does not empower or service APC leaders, Barrister, you know, say. all these are easy to say. Uh, the real challenge is when they become governor. I mean, look at what is happening in River State at the moment. But also, if you're saying that uh, uh, Governor Basaki does not have a god, so many would have expected him, I mean, based on all of what he had said in the past, many would have expected him to, you know, uh, be governor for eight years and leave without supporting anyone. But I will support his party. Mm. They will support his party. Absolutely. That's that on everywhere in the world. But you know what? He's a uh, member of the PDP and he will support the party to win. Mm. But he's not doing it as do or die as Adam Soshomole did in 2016. He's not taking it like that. If I have ever seen God John Paseki in the campaign of Aswe Budalo. Campaign hasn't campaign really has started, Barrister. Don't campaign worry. Campaign, campaign hasn't campaign. started. We're here. Campaign but you know what? In you know, let's let's quickly move on because of time. You know, Edo decides okay. twenty twenty was a straight and open race between two major parties whose candidates were uh, Ise Yamo of the All Progressives Congress and incumbent governor Godwin Obaseki of the PDP. It's a bit different now. The Labour Party is also in the race, which did pretty well uh, in the twenty twenty three presidential election. So, how will you surmount these dynamics? To tell you the truth. The Labour Party is even showing more competitiveness mm. than the APC. What the APC members and their candidate are relying on is federal might to try and rig the election in their favor. But the problem that the Labour Party can you know that that's an allegation. You have to um Barrister, you have to take that back. That's an allegation you cannot What's substantiate. That? What's that? You said that uh, the APC is waiting for federal money to rig, or federal no, power they, to rig no. the election. They say it now. They don't hide it. Mm. So, I mean, you don't have anything to to, to prove. You don't have no, any proof to that. Like a journalist, you can look at that. In fact, I can send you the video right after this program. They are saying it. They don't hide it. And that's why they even did what they did today in Benin. But even look at it. I said the candidate of the Labour Party. The two problems he has is that one, 
He does not have the temperament to be governor of a new state at this time. Then secondly, he happens to be the cousin of the current governor of Edo State. They are from the same world. They are from the same local government. So how can Obaseki hand over to his own cousin? And Edo people have so agreed that power, the governorship of Edo State, should move to Edo Central at this time. They have never produced a governor since the inception of Edo State, right from 1991 to date. And Edo State is a family state. So because we are a family state, mm. we will not leave anyone behind. We are going to take everyone along because we sit or stand on a tripod. Edo North, the Afemai, they produce the government under uh, Adam Soshimole. Edo South has produced three governors. Chief Otijide Oyekun, Chief Loki Binetion, and the current one, Governor Godwin Obaseki. And all of them happen to come from OLU, the same local government, as the candidate of the Labour Party. So we'll find a balance, we'll find a way to carry everybody along so that we all we have a sense of belonging. Some of us supported Asiwaju Bola Tinibu last year because, one, we believe that power should come to the South. The black power should come to the South, it should rotate, it should go around. So today, Edo people have agreed that power should go to Edo Central. And there are two major candidates of in this election from Edo Central. The candidate of the APC, Senator Mondo Pevolo, who was voted to represent the good people of Edo Central last year. Before he was inaugurated, he started going around that he wanted to be governor. He has not even done anything as a senator for Edo people to judge him by, for Edo people to rate him. As you have done as a senator, will now elect you as governor. He has shown nothing whatsoever. He has shown no capacity. So the other person is Dr. Asue Godalo, who also happens to be, because even in Edo Central, it is further divided into two. You have the Abazi Loazis, you have the Opebo Loazis. The Abazi Loazis has never produced a governor at all, whether from Midwest, Bende, or Edo. The people of have produced two governors. And they also produced most of the senators All right. representing that district. All right, then. You know, we're, we're gradually so you running that out on of time. Every, on every requirement, mm. Dr. Afe Odalo fills the bill as the next governor of the state. All right. You know, sadly, a police officer died. Yes. Barrister, sadly, a police officer died today as a result of uh, political violence. But some stakeholders have been gone to highlight the importance of a level playing field ahead of, the, ahead of the election, an opportunity where every political party will be free to put up its campaign banners and billboards without fear of intimidation. Would you say yes. that has already been put in place by uh, the government of uh, Gordon Obaseki? No, of course. There is, a, there is a level playing field. But the problem that we have, and as I told you before, is the misconception by members of the APC who believe that it, because the APC control the government at the federal, so they have a license to behave the way they want. And that was why they behaved the way they wanted today, by shooting sporadically, by chanting war songs on the streets of Benin. And it's unfortunate that they said the police officer died, though I have not confirmed it yet, but I've seen it around, that a police officer died. It is unfortunate. Mm. Because of the way Finish Ibu came, and he wanted to resort to self-help to make himself deputy governor, where there's a subsisting appeal and stay of execution. So there's a level playing field. Nobody is being molested. Nobody is being attacked. Everybody is allowed to campaign in the whole of Edo State. But it's not that the APC, because their candidate is a bit of tie, has not really started campaigning. Mm. Sometimes right. they campaign by closing. They hide their candidate and their deputy governorship candidate. Their intention is to take them to the back door without a do people actually quizzing them, trying to interrogate them. But we must interrogate every candidate, every candidate that presents himself for election in the justice. 
I don't say he's highly sophisticated, highly educated, and highly right, aware. Then. So we're wrapping up gradually, uh, but uh, the governor of Edo State has been criticized for swearing in judges 11 months after recommendation by the National Judicial Council. Does it present the state government well that this was done 11 months after its recommendation? And what signal do you think uh, this action will pass to the people and the electorate since the swearing-in was carried out five months before, before the governorship election in the state? But they have been sworn in that is what really matters. Mm. I honestly don't have much information about the reason why that swearing in was delayed. I, I don't I, I, I can't quite speak on that. But what is important now is that they have been sworn in and they have they assigned their courts and they are judges today. All right. So quickly in 30 seconds, you know, it was a contentious move to subject. I mean, that's what people are saying that it was a contentious move to subjugate and strip the judiciary of its independence. But also, you know, many people have said if the PP, PDP had displayed a lack of integrity within the party as a result of how, how the primaries went. So why should the people vote for your party? In 30 seconds, Barrister. The people should vote for my party because we have a candidate who has a plan. We have a, party, we have a candidate who has a degree. We have a candidate who feels the bill as a governor of Edith State at this time, because he has the character, he has the competence, he has the personality to All be right. governor of Edo State right. and to inspire Edo to a high level of good governance. All right. So that Edo people will come up and actualize the reserves. All right. So thank you so much for joining us this evening. Barrister thank Dan you for having me. Obege, Dan spokesperson, PDP Governorship Campaign Council. Thank you so much as we discussed the preparations of PDP for the upcoming governorship election. Thank you so much. We look forward to more conversations with you. And thanks a lot for watching, everyone. That marks the end of today's episode of Politics Tonight. But you can watch the repeat broadcast of this episode at midnight. Get in touch with us on our social media handles, Facebook, Instagram, and X at Citizen News NG. And at Olajumoke WO using the hashtag Politics Tonight. We're also on YouTube at youtube.com forward slash Citizen News Nigeria. I am Olajumoke Olatiji. Good night, everyone.